Welcome everyone to a comparison video between the Type 55 Large Destroyer and the Ale Berg Destroyer. The Type 55 is a Chinese multi-role destroyer designed for general warfare at sea. It has all-round capabilities in area air defense, anti-ship, land attack, and anti-submarine capabilities. The Ale Berg is the primary frontline destroyer of the US Navy. It is also multi-role, although smaller than the Type 55. It is designed to be more defensive in nature, although it can undertake offensive operations if necessary. Both destroyers are designed to operate as part of a larger naval task group. There are around 70 Ale Berks in service in the US Navy. Broadly speaking, there are four basic variants of the Berks, which are iterations known as flights. Flights 1 and 2 Ale Berks are old. They're built between 1988 and 1997. They're still very capable in terms of air defense. They have good surface to air missiles and the Aegis combat system. But they are outdated in many respects. For example, they have no hangars for their helicopters. This means that their anti submarine helicopters cannot be maintained during long deployment. Their main search radar is also fairly outdated. The radar is the AN Spy 1 passive electronically scanned array. It is very good when it first came out, and still is considered a fairly reliable system. But it is outdone by more modern active electronically scanned array radars in terms of range and resolution. The main difference between Flights 1 and 2 Ale Berks is the combat system and the electronic warfare suite. But for the purpose of this discussion, these differences are fairly minor. 28 out of the 70 Ale Berks currently serving in the US Navy are Flights 1 and 2. The other two variants of the Berks, the Flights 2A and 3, are newer. These Berks correct for many of the weaknesses of the Flights 1 and 2 Berks. For example, they all have double hangars for two SH-60 Seahawk anti-submarine helicopter. Most importantly, Flight 3 has a much more advanced main air search radar, the AN Spy-6 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar. It is also referred to as the Air and Missile Defense Radar. This radar has a much longer range, a higher radar resolution, and it is much harder to jam than the basic AN Spy-1 radar on the Flights 1 and 2 books. Information related to this new radar is highly classified. The Flights 2A books continue to use the AN Spy-1 passive array radar. Note that as of right now, none of the Flight 3 Ale books have entered service. They are either still in construction or on sea trails. But the US Navy is intending to field lots of Flight 3 books over the coming two decades. A total of 42 Flight 2A of the Ale Berg destroyers are currently serving in the US Navy. This video compares the Chinese Type 55 large destroyer against Flight 3 and Flight 2A of the Ale Berks, which are the future and the, the present frontline destroyers of the US Navy, respectively. So let's start with area air defense, because this is the primary role of both destroyer classes. The Berg 3s appear to have better surface-to-air missiles than the Type 55. The long-range SAM on the Berg 3 is the standard missile 6. The range is estimated to be between 370 km to 460 km, much longer than the 300 km on the HHQ-9B of the Type 55. Perhaps more importantly, the standard missile 6 is able to use active radar homing, which is a more accurate guidance system and is considered harder to jam, which is better for guidance at long ranges. The Chinese HQ-9B uses semi-active radar homing mixed with inertial guidance. This can be stealthier during the cruising phase of the flight, but it is considered to be less reliable than active radar homing. The Chinese Navy is developing the HHQ-9C, which will incorporate active radar guidance. 
the medium to long range surface to air missiles on the Berks, the standard missile too, appear to be better as well. They have much longer range and are faster than the medium range SAMs on the Type 55, which are either the HQ-16 or the FC-3000N. That said, none of the two ships have an obvious advantage in terms of the guidance systems on their medium range surface to air missiles. However, the Type 55 does have more vertical launch cells, 112 to the 96 on the Berkshire. This means more ammunition for the Type 55, as well as a higher rate of missile launch. Far more critically, I think the main air search radar on the Type 55 is actually better. Now, information related to the radars are of course highly classified, so this is just my assessment based on certain publicly available information. Both radars are in the same weight class, so to speak. Both are active electronically scanned array radars. Both are very recent developments. But the panel arrays on the Type 55 are estimated at around 5 meters in diameter, while the panels on the Burke is 4.3 meters. When we are talking about phased array radars, a larger radar panel usually means more antennas within the array, and this usually means a higher resolution and a longer detection range. Now this is not always true, but it is a general rule when assessing how powerful a radar array is. Secondly, the Type 55 destroyer has a much larger power output, 145,000 horsepowers, which are used partly to power six electricity generators, compared to 105,000 horsepowers on the Arle Burke. This allows the Type 55 to use much more powerful and power-hungry systems and keep them running at max capacity. In this photo, you can see that the Type 55 is pouring out a lot of water at the waterline. This suggests that a lot of internal cooling is taking place. So the radars inside of the ship must be running really hot, because it is consuming so much power. The other final point is that, in order to save cost, the Arle Burke's AN Spy 6 is only a single S-band radar, while the Type 346B radar on the Type 55 is a dual S and C-band radar. The C-band is a higher frequency and better for close-range target tracking. To be clear, the US Navy has plans to develop a new X-band radar for target tracking at close ranges. But in order to cut cost, the first dozen Berkshires will still use older systems. So in my opinion, the Type 55 has a better air search radar than the Berkshire. But this assessment is reliant on certain assumptions. For example, a larger radar arrays means better, and that more power-hungry systems should be more powerful. The Flight 2A of the Arle Burks still uses a passive electronically scanned array radar, and this is definitely much less powerful than the active phased array on the Type 55. In terms of area air defense, I will say that the Type 55 destroyer is on roughly equal footing with Flight 3 of the Arle Burks. The better surface-to-air missiles on the Berkshire is roughly balanced out by the better radars and the greater missile capacity on the Type 55. But compared with Flight 2A of the Berks, the Type 55 is definitely better in terms of air defense because the difference in radar technology is too great. The Type 55 is clearly favored in terms of anti-surface and anti-ship firepower. The Chinese YJ-18 is a supersonic anti-ship missile with a very large range. It combines the stealth of a subsonic missile with the hitting power and the speed of a supersonic missile. It has high radar jamming and evasive capability. The Type 55 is also believed by the US Navy to be able to use anti-ship ballistic missiles which generally have a hypersonic terminal phase. This increases the anti-shipping firepower of the Type 55. 
In contrast, Flight 3 of the Ale Burks still rely on the anti-ship version of the Tomahawk Block 5. This is originally a land attack missile, but with a modified anti-shipping capability. It has a large warhead and the range is similar to the YJ-18. But the crucial weakness is that this is still a subsonic missile. The Ale Burks can also use their air defense weapons, their standard missile 2 and the standard missile 6 in a secondary anti-ship role. They have the advantage of a supersonic speed, but their warhead is smaller than dedicated anti-ship missiles, and their flight altitude is very high, making them easier to spot and giving the enemy a lot of reaction time. Their range is also smaller than dedicated anti-ship missiles. The US Navy is developing a hypersonic version of the standard missile 6, with a modified anti-ship function, but this is not expected to happen before at least 2025. In terms of anti-submarine warfare capabilities, I think the Type 55 and the De Ale Berg 3 are about equal. The Type 55 has either two Z-20 or Z-18 anti-submarine helicopters, while the Ale Berg's have two SH-60 Seahawks. These helicopters appear to be similar in terms of speed and range, although the Z-18 can carry more sonar boys. On the whole, I would say that the helicopters are about equivalent in terms of anti-submarine capabilities. Both ships have anti-submarine missiles, the U-8 for the Type 55 and the US Navy's vertical launch anti-submarine rockets, although the U-8 has a longer range. Both destroyers have the same amount of light torpedo tubes for close-range anti-submarine warfare. In terms of sonars, both the Type 55 and the Berk 3s should have a full suite of hull-mounted sonar, a towed array sonar system, and a variable depth sonar. That said, the Flight 2A of the Ale Berks actually do not have stern sonars, such as a towed array sonar system. This is in order to accommodate the helicopter facilities. The lack of stern sonars will have greatly reduced their underwater detection range. The basic hull of the Ale Burk was designed when warship radar stealth was not the predominant consideration. The Burk does have some basic features to reduce the radar cross-section, such as an angled hull and a compact superstructure and a relatively clean deck, but there is a fair amount of clutter on the top side of the superstructure, and the Ale Burke is not as stealthy as modern designs. The Type 55 is on another level in terms of stealth. It also has angled surfaces and a compact superstructure, but with a cleaner top deck and superstructure surface with much less clutter than the Ale Burke. Objects that can be otherwise picked up by enemy radars are all enclosed inside the hull, including torpedoes and the mooring chains. There are fewer equipments and weapons protruding from the deck, and the ones that are there, for example the naval gun, all have stealth designs. The integrated radar mast houses all the radar systems, which is a major increase in stealth capabilities. This feature is not found on the Burke 3 due to cost considerations. The price tag or the cost of building each ship is something that is often overlooked, but still very important. The Type 55 destroyer is no doubt much cheaper than a Flight 3 Ale Burke. According to the US Congressional Research Service, each of the Burke 3s cost 1.9 billion US dollars to build in the 2020 fiscal year. Meanwhile, Western experts estimate the cost of a single Type 55 to be around 900 million US dollars. So for the price tag of one Berk 3, China can build two of the Type 55. Surely that must count for something. In my opinion, this is how the Type 55 would compare with the US Navy's next generation of Ale Brooks, the Flight 3. 
In terms of area air defense, I think this is on the whole roughly even. But the capabilities are not symmetric. The Berkshire has better surface to air missiles at medium to long ranges, and this is balanced out by the Type 55's larger, more power hungry, and presumably more powerful air search radars. In terms of anti shipping firepower, the Type 55 is clearly stronger with its YJ 18 supersonic anti ship missiles. In anti submarine warfare capability, both destroyers are about equal. Both have two capable long range anti submarine helicopters, anti submarine rockets, torpedoes, and sonar outfits. The Type 55 is a lot stealthier than the Burke 3 which increases its survivability in a modern war. Also, the large cost advantage is very important. It means that China can build warships much faster than the United States. Compared to the Flight 2A of the Arleigh Burks, which are the current mainstay of the US Navy's destroyer force, the Type 55 is clearly better. In terms of area air defense, the Type 55 has a substantial advantage due to a much newer active phased array radars. In anti submarine warfare, the Type 55 is also favored due to the lack of towed array sonars on the Burke 2A. That said, the Ale Burke is still a reliable and good design, having endured changes in terms of naval tactics and technology for three decades already. The Flight 3 of the Ale Burks is very competitive compared with the Type 55, which is after all a much bigger warship and a much more recent design. Because this has been a comparison video, we have not gone into too much depth on the specific capabilities of the Type 55. If you would like to watch a guide on the Type 55, please watch the video on your screen right now.